This is gonna be a 10 incher after we get that joint in there. 10 inch, two piece, glider, flathead, catfish. I'm actually going to go for a slow sink. I overthink this stuff way too much before I start a build. It's been a couple hours thinking about it, drawing that. Let's get to work. I made a channel catfish with big ice spikes. I'm gonna use the smaller sized ice spikes for the whiskers. Fun facts. I probably sounded like a bad word. Whoops. I'm gonna check the captions below and see if that was blanked out or not. My finger hurts. I burnt it in this video. Look forward to that. It's the most prevalent fact in my mind at the moment. Anyway, the flathead catfish. Some people call it the shovelhead cat. I've never encountered one of those persons, but I've heard it called the mud cat. I think it was one of my old wrestling coaches called it a mud cat one time and I didn't know what he was talking about and later confirmed he was talking about a flathead. These things exist all the way from Mexico to the Great Lakes. Very large region of existence for this fish. Some places consider it an invasive species. Weirdos. This thing's not an invasive. This is a great fish. Very powerful, eats large baits. You can catch them on lures, you can catch them on live bait. They, they most prefer live bait, that's the thing. I've caught them on big, soft plastic swim baits though, and that's pretty cool. Fun fact, that's pretty cool. The most closely related fish to the flathead catfish is the wide mouth blind cat. Never heard of it. They're white, it looks like they don't have eyes, and they have a wide mouth. I'll have to make one of those someday. You ever hear anybody call a flathead a Johnny cat or a granny cat, Mississippi cat, a pied cat, yellow cat, a gujon, a gujon, apoluchion, opalosis, an opalosis, really? People in the fishing community, need, we need to get our stuff together. We have too many names for the same thing. Everything related to fishing has 20 different names. It's disorienting. There's not a lot of fun facts on the flathead. I've read through this whole article. They're a pretty standard fish. Big hardy fellas, they grow real big. 61 inches, weighing up to 123 pounds. That would be the fish of your lifetime if you caught an over 120 pound flathead. All hail you, you've done it. You've reached the pinnacle of fishing. Blue catfish get bigger though. The largest weighed flathead catfish was not caught conventionally, just one that they found probably electro fishing or something. Arkansas River, 139 pounds, 14 ounces, 69 inches long. Yeah, I'd probably have to like, maybe use my other arm to lift that thing. Everybody likes to talk about the big ones, you know? But a fully matured flathead catfish is anything over 18 inches, which, you know, maybe three pounds, three, four pounds, I don't know, 18 inches. It takes four or five years for them to reach about 18 inches in a normal environment. They tune in on things that move and make vibrations, struggling, live, living things that are what they're actually looking for. That's why you can catch them pretty reliably on lures, but they probably like to get in there and put their tentacles, whiskers on stuff, you know, and feel for the, aliveness of that thing before chomping. Unless you can really elicit a reaction strike out of them, they're probably very catfish-like and like to taste what they're about to eat. Green sunfish, channel catfish, bullheads, drums, other flatheads you can use as bait, carp you can use as bait. This is all stuff you can use as bait. You can get dinner plate sized chunks of bait and feel confident in its ability to still catch a flathead catfish. It's like the most fun live bait fishing type of species to go after. I have just been notified that there is a gray cat missing in my neighborhood. I don't know why I get those notifications. <laughs> so when they lay eggs, they're inside of a nest called a clutch. About 2,600 eggs inside of this little thing that they like to stash inside of hollow logs and structure and stuff. The males build the nest and fiercely and tirelessly guard the nest after being built. They defend the clutch. The size of the clutch depends proportionately to the size of the female. So the males are looking for big females in order to up their chances of successful procreation. The young catfish are cannibalistic. It gets pretty uh, reckless. It says, which has largely precluded their presence in aquaculture. You can't farm them very successfully. They eat each other. They just won't chill. That's, their pro that's the problem. People think this is the tastiest catfish as well. The old mud cat tastes the best, apparently. Other than that, I mean, there's literally nothing else to say about this fish. It doesn't look crazy cool in any way. I mean, I've seen some pretty awesome patterned flatheads actually. I delete like every picture off of my phone that aren't of my kids or family and stuff, just to save space. I don't have any fish pictures on my phone to show you the awesome colors I've seen on a flathead catfish before. But anyway, there's a fun fact that's not related to flatheads. It's just one of those fish that you're like, it's down there, it bites, you catch it, and you're like, oh cool, I caught a flathead. You're never disappointed. 
that you caught the flathead, you know? So, old granny cat. Fun facts are over. Are your lures not spiffy enough? You need your baits to have more of that wow factor. It's happened to me, working super hard on a bait, hours and hours and hours, left disappointed with the result. Bad action, looked a little bit too homemade. No, that's not a turd with hooks on it. This is a bait that I made over a decade ago, one of the first. <laughs> Let's put that down. You know, instead of spending those hours in the shop to end up with this, this literally made out of a clothes pin, some Craylon white spray paint on the top. Look at the color transition, beautiful. That was done with a pen, glitter, rattle can paint. Yeesh. Uh, <laughs> you can spend a fraction of the time and something like this can be the result instead. You know? Talk about better. <laughs> when your buddy comes over, you don't have to show him that you've been working on this for seven hours. You can just be like, yeah, I, ju I just threw together this 16 inch grayling in my free time recently. No big deal. You know, I wasn't going for the blocky vibe. I just didn't know how to not do the blocky vibe. I was doing my best at the time, but you know what I was lacking? The fish with your masterpiece lure making course. Instead of spending large portions of your life to make this, which I am at fault of, you can spend small portion of your life to make this or something like this. You'll have access to the templates to make things like this even. The fish with your masterpiece lure making course is here to level up your bait making. Even with the most basic tools and supplies, you can crank out the most impressive of masterpieces. To find more about how, and to see everything else included, like the official bait makers community, that's included, click the link in the description below. It's just fantastically designed to teach you how to make these, not these, these. Absolutely everything necessary to know to wooden lure making. Go check it out, man. Go sign up. Go join. Look forward to seeing you there. Rather recessed. There's gonna be quite a bit of meat bulging around the outside of the eye though. That's how these catfish like to roll. So, stuff to be aware of while carving. You know, there's that bone in these things that really stick out. And of course, gills. I am a little too comfortable eyeballing everything. <laughs> This is the point I've come to. But you know, that's the orientation of that big bony ridge that flatheads have on the sides. It goes along pretty natural with how the chamfer lines would be otherwise, so. That's gonna have to come out pretty far towards the nose there because we're gonna stick a whisker right off of that round spot. Okay, I'm confident with that. Right there though, boom. That ridge, nice and sharp, pronounced. Not carved. Carved, roughly. Starting to get super interested in how this thing's gonna work. I feel like it's gonna be good. It's so wide, it'll reduce the tendency for it to roll. I think it's gonna achieve really long glides with stability. I'm gonna go get some more coffee. I'm not shaky enough. And probably eat lunch too, it's about noon. We'll come back, smooth this off, get some details in it, start on the fins. I kinda wanna get this to where I can paint it by the end of the day. Let's see how far we can get. Such a good shape so far though. There's just so much shape to this, I don't wanna stick it in my vise. It won't hold very well and I'll just dig into this soft Tupelo wood. We're gonna do all this with a piece of sandpaper in my hand. I'm gonna flatten out under the jaw here, make it kind of taper in so the gills will look appropriate. I'm gonna leave this ridge. Make sure all of this shape is maintained. I chopped away at the head up there a bit. I'm trying to get it flatter, but I had to go through the eye socket, so it's a good opportunity. This thing needs to be angled up anyway. It has to like start how it was, and then, then I move it as the drill spins. At this point, I feel like I've just completely abandoned my drill press. 
It's just over there, like, oh, you don't need me anymore? Fine. <laughs> Maybe I don't need you. Pretty good. More carving. So much more carving. Those are some spots where those whiskers are gonna come out of. Wanna establish those, keep it that thick in those spots. That's a strange set of gills, but I believe that is what they need to be. A lot of the time, catfish have like a hole right there. Yeah, that, that was a mess up. You saw it. I don't have to say anything about it. It won't be an issue. You see where I sliced through? That little mark right there. When I seal the wood, that'll seal up too. So. If it's just one slice through in the wrong spot, it's no big deal. Just don't cut to that line <laughs> from anywhere else. Thing I don't show very much. There is always burrs on the edge of lexin polycarbonate that you have to scrape at. This is a piece of brass, and I sharpen the edge to a little hook point right there. I just dig at slots like those with it. Little sandy ball bit. Makes me want to grab it like you should a catfish, you know? With the spines between your fingers, you know? <laughs> All right, I gotta find some super, super center line nidge on this thing. Got a couple of spots already on this back piece for some lead. I think the rear hook hanger is gonna slide right next to this fin. The front one's gonna be somewhere up there. This thing's looking flowy though. It's got good lines, nice fin proportions and everything. It's gonna look good. Massive 25 millimeter hole right there. Three quarter inch hole behind it and another three quarter inch in front of it. Pretty big hooks going on this bait back here, probably like a one knot. That's gonna weigh it down. There's a lot of fins coming off of everywhere back here, top, bottom, pelvic, tail. It's not a lot of wood. It gets very thin back here, so that might actually be enough, but there's a lot of wood up here. It's a thick piece, so big holes coming up. 25 millimeter. Very clean. I hope that's enough, because that's all I feel like drilling. I'm gonna sand this thing quite a bit more. What else? Cut the joint, establish all the pilot holes, and then steal the wood. That's where some small ice spikes are gonna go inside of for whiskers. Here we go, last thing today. Gotta seal this wood. So I got holes going from lead hole to lead hole and notches in the sides of the lead holes and stuff. That way the lead has a lot to grab and it can't work its way up.
Let's get in hot. Here I have a bunch of joint hardware ready to get twisted up from a previous build. Point zero four one inch diameter stainless steel wire. Fits good, looks good, we're good. After we get the lead in here, we're gonna tack in all the fins, nice and light-like. I'm gonna pour lead around this screw eye too and then unscrew it once it solidifies. That way I don't have to drill a pilot hole in it. The same needs to be done for back here too because you see how that hole continues through the lead and back into the wood behind the lead. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. What a lovely YouTube video I'm making. Like that. All right, the lead is about to be served up hot, straight into the belly of this thing. Woo. Bit of a burn, I'll be okay. Let's see how it does in the water. You can already tell it sinks like a rock. I put way too much lead in the front piece. Whoopsie dipsy. There. Barely floats. The hooks will make it sink. That's just the front piece. The rear piece does sink just a smidget. Let me put this together. All right, it sinks very slowly, which is good. I need it to float without the hooks on it and the screw eye in and other stuff. The fins sink too, because they're made out of polycarbonate. Uh, I need to remove more lead. I have already removed so much lead. Okay, that's kind of bad. That's one of the worst mess ups I've ever made. Woo. Okay. Um, there's a bit of baking soda. And super glue. We're just gonna patiently work it up to how it was originally and sand it down. No big deal. Everything's fine. Don't panic. I'm talking to myself. There's the patch. I'll smooth it all off once I'm done weighing it. Okay, hooks on. See how it works now. A little too fast. It's at like four inches a second, maybe a bit faster even. Okay, I'm pretty happy. That's almost a suspender. I just took out even more lead and now it's a super, super, super slow floater. There, it finally got to the top. The Lex and polycarbonate fins are next. That'll probably get like a perfect suspender. There we go. All the fins are on. Moment of truth right here. That truly is like exactly what I need. It floats just a tiny, tiny bit. Otherwise it just sits there. Let me give it a push. Yeah, and it's wanting to go a direction already. Look at it glide perfectly. The weight of the fin sticking out of the water right there on the top here is holding the bait down from the back being able to reach the surface. Finely tuned flathead catfish swim bait. The clear coat and the paint and the whiskers on the front will get this thing to sink super slow. I'm gonna put some micro spheres in the filler down here just enough to make it the same buoyancy as water so I'm not disturbing the sink rate. I'm kind of excited. This is perfect. Okay, the UV resin with a little bit of micro spherage works so good in the last build. The blobfish, so good. So that's exactly what we will be doing once again. I have like 40 little scoops inside of this bucket. We're gonna sacrifice one just to make sure we get good mix upageness. If it adds to the float a little bit, I'm happy with that too. This bait's gonna need a lot of clear coat. 
but I'll be applying this in layers. I think if I get too thick with it, it'll be too opaque and the UV light won't be able to reach the bottom. Just gonna let it sit for a while too, let the bubbles rise up. That's like all it takes. I can sand that already. And it's super hard. Those sanding marks are not like mushy at all. It doesn't want to like deform at all with just 10 seconds of UV light. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave that set up just like that and go eat lunch now. I decided yesterday to seal the wood and have it take another extra day so I can make sure that I put the correct weight and the glide bait, I, that's a responsible bait maker thing to do. Make sure you weigh your glide bait correctly because it's like the toughest thing to weigh in the bait world. But we'll get paint on it today, for sure. It's all been sanded as smooth as possible. I added some screw eyes, hardware, sanded some more. Took a little break and, and sanded some more after that even. It's pretty smooth. You know, if we're being real, this ridge right here should be a little lower, but I didn't want to put it lower. I want buoyancy high, not low where the weight is. It's got a ridge, it's not exactly placed where it should be, but that's screaming flathead catfish to me, so. Starting with white. Should probably open a window. Got a couple drabby yellows right here. Barren yellow, desert yellow. One's darker, one's lighter. I'm gonna give the whole thing the lighter yellow, and then I'm gonna kinda, kinda come back in spots with the darker yellow, I think. Staying away from the belly, the belly's white. Just about to pop the cap off of this again. You gotta poke these. I mean, never use this color. Oh, it's perfect. All right, now towards the top. Extra drabby yellow, barren yellow. One of these videos, I just wanna paint something like extremely wrong, way off, and act like it's normal, and finish the video and not say anything. On to the next bait. Okay, to fully tame all of this yellowness, I have this wonderful color called Pestilent Flesh. Olive green, but it's not dark. I don't want to darken this. This will just adjust the hue correctly without darkening it, I think. I come up with elaborate theories as I paint. I don't know if it's true or not, but I like to theorize. Even coat. I don't know if what I just did is visible, but it's perfect. Sometimes you can't see perfection. Pestilent flesh, that's a good color. If you want to make people wonder if there's any green right there. What it was, you know, the back piece versus how it changed. Can you see? You can see. Toned it down just a smidge. This is it though. I'm going to put this color on the tail piece here and then it's getting its first clear coat. Flathead wise, I think this, it's got a little bit of green. It has red and gold, or maybe that's copper, whatever. It's called copper pot from 8-Bit Baits. It's going in. And to that, a small amount of very fine gold glitter. And while we're at it, just a pinch of red can make things look a little bit more fleshy. Granny cat's getting shiny. Dude, I'm gonna call Flathead's Granny Cats from now on. That's a pretty good name. I didn't think so at first, but it's growing on me. There are slots on this Granny Cat that we're gonna wanna stay out of. Whisker holes and eye sockets. Don't need the clear coat. I mention that every time I have to like stay away from a spot with clear coat, because it is kind of difficult. 
I think that's why I mention it. I'm trying to get the recognition I deserve for actually staying out of the difficult to stay out of slots and holes. It's time for some extreme masking fluid application. You're about to be witness to some splatter. Oh, that doesn't work as good as I thought it would have. It's just gonna need a lot. I'm gonna give it some super big splotches in areas too. Kind of connect some, make it go all the way down in some spots. It's pretty intense. So what was just covered up with those splatters was the brightest yellows. That's like one of three main colors on the body. This is the brightest. There's gonna be a muddier yellow and then there's gonna be the olive, dark, brownish, cat, flathead catfish color too. Light olive gold is the middle color. There's gonna be the least of this color. Applied sparingly. So this is called rough iron. There's a lot of red in it, which I won't want showing too much on the end product, but I can come back with a green of some kind and drown out the red. Just a little bit of red, really. It's metallic though. I think that's gonna look pretty intense when we take the masking stuff off. Just making sure it's even, that's even. Okay. Last color is raven black. There's a just a hint of pearlized green. It's mostly black. Looking dirty. super high contrast yellow to whatever else colors are on here. If I'm gonna go for something natural, this needs to be tamed down a bit, but fantastic natural start to the pattern. Need to quickly get some spines on the fins. This epoxy right here is messing me up. Made sure they're not all perfect looking. It's gonna be detail smoke black and then other colors on these fins too. So now that the fins are kind of ready for color, I'm gonna go back to the bait. We're gonna add tainted gold and more of that raven black from long distances away. And it's the fading in of that yellow slightly, mostly towards the top. Some lighter colors are gonna come up from the bottom and fade the yellow in too. The tainted gold is like the secret ingredient. More light is bouncing off the side of the bait, disturbing that yellow than was before. Shiny, tainted gold, nothing. It's like the great equalizer. The great tainted equalizer. Okay, where the fins meet the body, and very much on the fins themselves. Gnome cheeks, war paint colors, they have the best names. The imagination just runs wild with what cheeks they're referring to. The transition color from the white belly, 
up the sides, fade everything in. At this point, the color application is so back and forward, I, I can't make a good video out of it. I'm just gonna like spray. I'm gonna spray, spray, spray until it's right. Finishing touches with detail smoke black. Just gonna tie all this together very nicely. So I can't bring myself to do something that would make this look more natural because I like the way that it's so contrasting right now, but black dots over the yellow. I just can't do it. I don't wanna do it. I want it to look goopy, super dramatic, high contrast, just like that. That's what I want, so be it. It is time to five minute all of these fins in. That looks so good. I mean, you're, you're allowed to draw your own opinions from how it looks. Flatheads kind of look like dirty sharks. So, of all of my dead meat custom quarter inch eyes, I'm having a really hard time deciding between this one or this one. There's like a little bit of blue in this one, which makes it pretty cool, and the pupil's smaller, but this has like a, I don't know, like a tropical vibe to it. Cool blue or tropical vibe? Decisions, decisions. I'm gonna go with cool blue. Yeah, that's an interesting addition. It's bluish. Makes you wonder if that's really what they look like, but they don't. We're going outside of the box with this flathead swim bait. It's not perfectly realistic, but I like the looks of it. More than perfectly realistic. I'm allowed to do that on this channel. Sweet. Sometimes I stick a toothpick in the joint because that super glue spills over just a bit. And I just want to make sure those metal wires aren't touching as the glue sets. It's time to get to work on the whiskers. I have 1.25 inch ice spike and three. Three might be a bit much, but I'm gonna do two different colors, pearly white and 0 0.015 black glitter. A Little bit of the earthworm color mixed with, uh, I think this is called used motor oil. You can darken stuff very gradually with it. I don't want it to be that dark. I want this color to shine through a lot with the flake. For the white, we're gonna use iridescent pearl. That'd be a sweet color for anything, really. Okay, I got them the perfect temps. Vacuum them, they're good to go. My injector and molds are cold, but all I need are two, so I don't really care. We'll get some good shots out of these no matter what. You know, if the 1.25s are too small, I can just use the back end of a three inch. Those all shot perfect out of a cold mold, so we're good. I'm happy with that. It's the correct color, nothing's too dark. They have white whiskers pretty much. That's like more detailed than the real thing, so good stuff. Yeah, those are tiny. <laughs> Might be a little too small. I'm not gonna use the whole three inch, but I kinda like the thickness of the three inch. I can get a longer whisker. I like that. All right, that's what we'll use.
Pretty crazy. That looks really good. Okay, this is gonna be how it works with a big honking 80 pound snap swivel on the front. Not exactly accurate. It floats. And it dives. Whoa. It wants to dive really hard. Okay, it wants to do stuff. It wants to do this, not side to side. <laughs> I mean, it. you might have saw it there. It does have a little bit of a side to side tendency. Like it just slams its head into the bottom. <laughs> At least it floats. It struggles around enough to where I think it's able to elicit a reaction strike. It's just not a consistent action in any way. It doesn't, that wasn't the goal, but still fishable. Let's go give it a shot. All right, swivel. I'm gonna trust you. To the river. Let's see if it swims better out here. I don't know, maybe it does on a long cast. Oh, that, that fishing reel was loose. Whoa, bro. Just gonna voice over here because I wasn't explaining myself and the answer is no. There is no difference. It, it's just a little bit of an erratic swim. That's it. Dude, this thing dives. And there you have it, yet another absolute masterpiece for the bait legations. It'll be interesting with the action that it has. Very different, not useless. It's, it does this and it will swim a little bit and it, it definitely moves itself as you pull it through the water, but not traditional whatsoever. I'm stacking them up over there. Everything I need for the springtime ditch fishing, the bait legations, the most official video ever. Devil's Hole Pupfish Grinch Lure, a snake lure that Shankbait made me, and a glider. The Johan Custom Lure Gator, the fiber optic swim bait, the blobfish, and the flathead. And I got some more over here that I wanna fish with. What else? Working on a monster over there for a collaboration with another YouTuber. There's probably more down there boxed away. I'm gonna leave you with that. Thanks for watching. On to the next bait. I just let him out. I'm not gonna let him out. I just let him out. Okay, fine. Fine. Actually, somebody's working on the well out in front of the house, so I'm not gonna let you out. Stop it, Chip. Don't tempt me. <gasps> kind of like the thickness of the three inch. Hmm? We gotta poke these. You're about to be witness to some splatter. <coughs> this is perfect. Yeah. Yeesh.